Everybody loves nature. Who doesn't love watching nature shows and just finding out the fabulous things that plants and animals do? And that's what people in EEB do, is we're the people who discover those things. It's really part of the human endeavor to try to understand the world around us. In fact, the greatest societies in the past have all been ones in which science has risen to the level of a profession. So it's, it's basic human nature to want to understand what we see around us. And fundamental scientific research or basic research is the research that does that. I'm interested in discovering new species. I study their um, presence in different environments and um, describe new species and build new classification information that will help future biologists. Um, well, I think the natural world has a lot of surprises. I mean, that's really the joy, the tremendous joy you get every time when you find something new. And uh, it doesn't really happen every day or even every week. But in, in our case, it actually happens quite often. It's usually once every month. And that's really often enough to make life interesting. And you have a lot of those moments you know, every month or so. And you feel, wow, God, this is, you know, this is, I'm the only person in the whole world that knows about this. Curiosity creates everything. It makes new things. It makes it possible for us to create solutions to problems. You know, it took 2,000 years of curiosity-driven research on the way birds fly to get people into planes and off the ground. And 2,000 years is a long time to get to that new thing, to that ability to get into the plane and fly to Florida. But I don't know who at this point would feel like that time was wasted. What's exciting to me about being an EEB is that everyone in the department works on organisms at some level. They might be molecular biologists, they might be anatomists, they might be ecologists. Whatever they do, ultimately, they're trying to understand how whole systems evolve and change through time. And ultimately, that's what we have to understand if we're going to conserve it, uh, if we're going to understand how it's going to change with climate change, uh, what will be affected, what won't be affected. It all starts with understanding the details of the minutiae and then putting it all together. So I think that one of the things, one of the more significant things that people in ecology and evolutionary biology do is, is we actually uh, see the next biggest threat coming down the line because all the species out in nature are like a, a large collection of canaries in the coal mine. And so by studying them, we, we actually can, can figure out these, these risks to the public and to the economy and, and, and to the things that we hold dear. As a conservation biologist, one of the things that we're interested in is clearly um, how do we reduce the rate at which species are going extinct, which is a growing concern with the loss of biodiversity globally. But we're also interested in trying to figure out how do you do it in the most efficient way possible, because there's very limited resources in terms of people time or money to do conservation, and so we want to be able to use that money in the most effective way possible. Um, so a lot of our research is focused not only on what will help save species, but also how we do it in a way that is most cost effective.